I'm Steve Williams, and this is Scooter and the Sticks. Out on this fine autumn day to uh, go for a ride to breakfast with my friend Paul. Talk a little bit about the Vespa light. So, let's get going. I found something special riding the Vespa. Something I guess I call the Vespa life. There's just a relaxed feel when I'm riding the Vespa as opposed to anything else. And uh, there's always a sense of calm and serenity that goes along with it. And while I'm not sure why other people buy a Vespa, I suspect many discover this after they're riding. And I think what may be unique about the scooter is you don't have to go on long rides and long trips and big adventures. Not that those aren't fun. Jesus, the sun right in my eyes, I can't see. So excuse the sound uh, of the wind. I have the visor up. But, uh, you know, one of the things that I find is these little routines, the little rides, the whether they're errands or commutes or ride to breakfast like today. Um, they're thrilling in their own way. And uh, they are like little adventures. It's all part of the best of life. I'm not sure why riding the Vespa is so different. I thought that it's the relatively compact size of the scooter. Though when I line it up next to my motorcycles, it seems pretty much the same size. I don't know if it's the twist and go throttle so that I don't have to shift and fiddle with all the mechanical aspects of a motorcycle. Um, but there is something uh, seductive in a very quiet way. I talk about riding the Vespa as thrilling even though it's not uh, an adrenaline rush thrilling in some other way. But, uh, part of it is just being out in the world. And I know for some of the people that watch this video, they don't have as easy access to an already serene world that I do. But if you're in a place that's uh, has relatively lightly trafficked roads if you're in rural areas and you don't want a motorcycle but you still want to get out and fly like a bird, the Vespa may be the perfect thing to introduce you to the Vespa life. It's a beautiful autumn morning about 54 degrees when I left and I have my heavier gloves on and my winter riding jacket and I just turned on the heated grips and that gives a nice little toasty feel to the palms of my hands it's always nice sort of like the Vespa version of having a little campfire to warm your hands on. 
Make no mistake though, heated grips are not enough for winter riding. I'm riding to breakfast with my friend Paul this morning. He's on his Vespa Primavera 150 scooter. And I think part of the Vespa life, if you're lucky, is finding another Vespa rider to enjoy the riding experience with. Uh, I've been riding with Paul for my entire uh, Vespa career when I first got one back in 2004 or five. And uh, it's really nice to be able to venture out with someone else. Now, don't get me wrong, I love riding alone. I love the, the sort of solitary reflection that can happen when you're on the road by yourself in places like this. But it's also enjoyable to experience it with others. I know I just, uh, because I have to share my riding time with uh, another Vespa scooter and two motorcycles, it's easy to forget sometimes how special it is to ride a scooter. One of the things that uh, I think gets in the way of a lot of people, and I I'll say a lot of men about riding a scooter is uh, they may think it's an inferior prod product or underpowered or uh, not for them, even though they may have never tried one. I suspect at the heart of all that is you have to have a pretty uh, solid appreciation of who you are and not be uh, overly worried about what people might think about you if you ride a scooter. I mean, I, I didn't show up in the scooter world, you know, as some ego strongman or anything. I just wanted one because I thought they were fun, so I stumbled into it, but uh, I guess I... I endured some ribbing and some uh, good-natured fun poked at me and not always good-natured. But where that stopped was when I continued to ride through the winter when all the other he-men riders drained the oil and gas out of their machines and uh, put them away for the winter and I was still hammering the roads on my Vespa. So I found a grudging respect from some of the hardcore riders and adventure riders that I knew. Because I was still going when it was 10 below zero. But that's a different aspect of the Vespa life. But I will say that this scooter is the perfect all around, year round, machine to ride in central Pennsylvania and if you can get your ego out of the way man you can have some fun and enjoyment and satisfaction all the time with just a little twist of the wrist and that's what's kept a scooter in the garage for me all these years but one of the questions I I find difficult to answer is when people say well what's your favorite sort of like having children and someone asking you what's your favorite child all I can say is uh, when I'm riding whatever I'm riding is my favorite and I make choices 
on what to ride for a variety of reasons. Sometimes it's, you know, I need to exercise one of the machines that hasn't been ridden in a while. Other times it's weather dependent. If it's really cold, I'll be choosing the Vespa almost every time. Um, but I have to say the position I find myself in with my Royal Enfield Himalayan, my Kawasaki W650, my Vespa ET4, and this Vespa GTS, they're all my favorites and they're all perfect and I don't have any trouble picking any of them, especially to go out on a beautiful day like this. I get questions about which Vespa should I get, you know, 150, a 50, a 250, a 300, and those are all dependent on what your plans are to ride, and things like that. <laughs> but I also get a question sometimes that has made me think, and someone will say, what color Vespa do you think I should get, or what do you think of this color? And uh, a couple things come to mind. One is, you know, why would my opinion matter at all about what color? But something occurred to me is there are so many color choices with a Vespa that stylistically you can make choices around uh, the Vespa that fit your personality almost. I mean, I the reason I love this silver scooter is, and it's called Excalibur Gray or Excalibur Silver, I can't remember now. But it is perfect in photographs. And as a photographer, you know, it just, I warmed to it as a subject. It just looked great. And uh, I really picked it for that reason, because there were other colors available. Um, I like red scooters, but I'm not wild about how they look in pictures. Uh, there's a new color out now, it's a beige. It's called beige something, an Italian word. And uh, when I heard that, I was like, beige? I don't want a beige scooter, but uh, it, it looks beautiful in photographs. I've never seen one in, out on the road anywhere, but uh, I wouldn't hesitate at all to choose that. But again, I choose for how they're going to look in, in pictures. Other people may choose them because there's a color that resonates with them. But with a Vespa, you have choices. It's not like uh, buying a Honda where you got one or two colors. You either get red and white or red and white. But uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a beautiful day, and the scenery is just stunning. I feel so grateful to live where I do, and ride where I do, and see what I see. about the derision aimed at scooters sometimes uh, I've heard scooters called them the minivan of the uh, riding world some derisive comment but I'll tell you people can shed their embarrassment and embrace the rather elegant simplicity of riding a Vespa scooter. They're big rewards to reap. Because they're so much fun 
and they've reduced the world to uh, an embraceable amount. I mean, I'm serious when I say every ride through every familiar place that I've been dozens and dozens of times feels new for some reason. But anyway, I'm getting hungry now, so I'm uh, looking forward to breakfast. The leaves have begun to drop and change. I suspect in the next week we'll be at the height of the fall foliage colors. It's always a spectacular time of year around here. You ready for breakfast? I'm ready. I was born ready. <laughs> This ride's going to end up at the Meandering Mallard for breakfast. Nice 28 mile ride winding through the countryside. Meandering Mallard Coffee House. show it before I eat it. <laughs> ah, that was a good breakfast. You can tell when you've had a good breakfast by how badly you want to take a nap afterwards. It's warmed up considerably. I've got my uh, summer gloves on now. That the Vespa life is a good life. It uh, provides some serenity, relaxation, calm, peace, quiet, and it also adds a little spice to life. A little motivation to get out and see the world rather than sit on the couch and watch television or whatever other distraction you might have. So that will wrap up this episode of Scooter in the Sticks. Hope you enjoyed it. Until next time, be well. Right, say.